is empty now. The cheers of capacity crowds bearing witness to San Diego State's unprecedented success are now a distant hum. It's said that time and tide wait for no man. So as the players move ahead to face even greater competitive challenges, eventually a banner will bear silent witness to the journey that became the most successful season in the history of San Diego State basketball. A 34-3 record, 23 weeks ranked in the top 25, a consensus second team All-American, and the national coach of the year. By all accounts, it was a sweet season. The journey actually began back on March 19, 2010, in Providence, Rhode Island. Freshman Kawhi Leonard's last second three-point attempt ends San Diego State's quest for their first ever NCAA tournament victory. The phrase, wait till next year, applies to every team in this tournament but one. But for San Diego State's head coach Steve Fisher, the disappointment of the moment almost immediately gave way to optimism. I realized that a year ago at the end of the season when we won the Mountain West Conference Tournament in 2010 and did it in convincing fashion. We were the best team there, won 25 games. We talked after that. We should be really good, as good as you are willing to commit in the off season. And then we preached that all spring of 2010 and into the fall of the 10-11 season. And I talked in our first meeting if you can close your eyes and dream, that's how good you can be. October brings the start of a new season, and for the Aztecs, their first ever national ranking. I remember when we were first ranked in 25th, and I told our team, we've never been ranked before. It's a big deal for us. We're ranked. This is in October. Hadn't played a game. Let's see where we are December the 9th, right after we play Cal. Are we still going to be ranked? While Fisher remained cautiously optimistic about the Aztecs' chances, senior captain D.J. Gay and his teammates had their sights set even higher. Right before season started, as we looked at, down at all our opponents, we knew that this was a schedule that we would have an opportunity to win in every single game. Um, there was no team that should, that should just crawl and beat us. We opened the season with five straight games away from home, and we as coaches were concerned. The Aztecs' coming out party was against perpetual NCAA tournament Goliath Gonzaga in front of a national television audience. The Zags came into the game having lost only four games in the history of McCarthy Athletic Center. That was a game that our fans were talking about. They never lose in that building. They were rated in the top 10 in the country when we played them. But San Diego State led for all but 15 seconds in this contest, thanks in large part to a career-high 30-point night for senior Billy White. Backing in against Harris. White with his career high now. He's got 28. You know, I felt like I was unstoppable that game. I felt like, you know, I could make every shot I put up. You know, I just felt that way. That Gonzaga game was the game that got us over that hump. We didn't know how good we were, how good we could be. And we knew that that was our first test. And, uh, you know, for us to go in there and, and come out with the win like we did, that Gonzaga game definitely got the wheels turning in, you know, in our minds and everybody else's mind across the nation. And we were the better team. And anybody that watched that game said, San Diego State's good. We went from Gonzaga to Oxford, Ohio, Miami of Ohio. First game, Wisconsin, Green Bay. We were. 20 some odd points behind them in the first half. I leaned over to Mark Fisher and I said, do you think we'll score 20 points in the first half? I mean, we were getting beaten to death. And then all of a sudden, we uh, made a play, made another play, got a little more engaged. And the next thing you know, we come back and win that game. That was a difficult tournament, playing in that very empty gym. You know, we weren't used to that at all knowing that these are games that we should win. That tournament uh, helped us realize how versatile uh, the team was and the different ways that we, we can find to win. The Aztecs went on to win three straight games and the tournament title, led by sophomore sensation and tournament MVP, Kawhi Leonard, 
to exemplify the Aztecs' versatility. The ball club we had this year had such great versatility that you could maneuver them like a chess game to exploit who you were playing at a given time. And if, for instance, uh, Kawhi Leonard, if they tried to put a big, strong guy that was going to beat him up when he played inside, you take him outside, we played him at the point some, where he would come off high ball screens and, and utilize him in that fashion. And the same thing with Billy White, who has the ability to take a defensive rebound, and he's got a 6'10 guy guarding him, put the ball on the floor and take it the length of the floor. So versatility made us very difficult to guard. The outstanding skill they had, but also the ability to change who they are and how they played at a given moment. When you have players like Billy White and uh, Kawhi Leonard that can guard anywhere from a point guard to a forward, that makes you very dangerous. Players that can rebound the heck out of the ball. We got players that can shoot, people that can handle, make decisions. We had one of the best passing big men in Malcolm Thomas. We had so many different weapons, you know, and we used all of them because we were so versatile. Uh, that made us a hard team to deal with. The team returned home to a top 20 ranking and their first sellout of the season. Looking to settle an old score, St. Mary's had beaten the Aztecs by 22 a year earlier which put the team on the first of many roads to redemption. We played them three or four times, and you know, they beat us twice. Last year, on uh, the first game that we had on ESPN, you know, we just knew it was coming to our house that we had payback, you know. I think from that game, that blowout game, uh, our team and you know, our coaches, you know, remember that day. So, you know, when we did play them, and, you know, we took it to heart and, you know, we took it personal. They embarrassed us, you know, my junior year, our first game, national television, you know, at their house. So um, we all remembered that, and, and that St. Mary's was, was big for us. We knew we had to, to go out there and improve ourselves. We have had some great games with St. Mary's. So when they came into this building, they're thinking top 20 team. They're thinking NCAA tournament. They're thinking statement game. And we pounded them. We beat them bloody from start to finish. I think our coaches at that point said, this is a team with resolve, with some toughness, with some character, with a whole lot of talent. We beat a really good team that we knew had gone to the Sweet 16 the year before. They had a lot of those guys coming back, and we thoroughly dominated them from start to finish. The Gonzaga, the, the St. Mary's, those were definitely confidence boosters, and um, let us know as a team that you know, we were very good and we can go as far as we want to go as long as we stay together, anything is possible. The Aztecs closed 2010 with a top 10 ranking and a New Year's Eve day sellout against Occidental. San Diego State basketball had become more than a passing fad. When people told me there's going to be a big crowd and then when they said every ticket's out, I'm thinking to myself, no way. No way are we going to get Division Three game New Year's Eve, two in the afternoon, and have 12,414, but we did. So we had a, a great atmosphere for that game, and I think that further set the stage and the table for those that came. Some maybe for the first time that said, a lot of fun, I wanna come again. I wanna find a way to get a ticket from somebody. How can I get a ticket? It was unbelievable. Uh, we weren't expecting that at all. But for the fans and the crowd to come out and sell out a game like that, people started to realize how special this season um, this was. You know, people didn't want to miss a game. It was magical, you know? Honestly, I was surprised, you know, to see anybody at that game. I'm thinking, you know, people are, you know, celebrating a party or something like that. But they were right there cheering for us, you know, and we thanked them for that. And they, you know, they've been doing that all year long. We've had sellouts in the past, but we haven't had what we, the phenomenon that occurred this year lines to get in, sleeping out nights before to get in. That doesn't happen anywhere. Well, maybe it happens at, at a Duke on occasion and a Kansas on occasion, but it happened here and it was a, it was a happening. 
people wanted to do it. It made all of us feel good. Yeah, it, it was a good feeling. Uh, definitely a good feeling. Definitely be remembered. Mexico was such a hard place to play. Got a lot of mystique about it. That it's that is has been and always will be the thing to do in Albuquerque. In divorces, they decide who's going to get the tickets and fight over them. The governor comes and on and on and on. So they they had to sell out crowd. San Diego State came to New Mexico, riding the nation's longest unbeaten streak of 18 games, and was one of only four unbeaten teams in the country. DJ Gay, who's had some great games everywhere, but none greater than what he's put on and when he's gone to New Mexico at times, he hit a three-quarter court shot for us at half. That would have been a nice answer for New Mexico. Instead, it's Gay. Oh, DJ oh, Gay! It's good! DJ Gay owns the final 30 seconds of the half! And we ran off the floor like we just won the national championship when he made that. Every road game before we head out of the gym, uh, pre-practice, coach has us take a half-court shot. So, I mean, it, it's nothing that, you know, we haven't done before and stuff like that. But when that ball left my hands, definitely felt good. Gay's heroics were not limited to half-court shots. He led the team with a career-high seven three-pointers, a career-best 30 points in all. It kind of felt weird uh, playing in the pit and it, it being quiet. DJ Gay! To win the game there the way we did, it further cemented in our building of this season. We can go anywhere. We can play anybody. We can play in front of 16,000, all cheering for the other team, and still win. The Aztecs were riding high. With 20 consecutive wins, the longest streak in the nation, the best start in San Diego State's 90 years of basketball, and a top five ranking on a collision course with another conference foe having a once-in-a-generation season. An irresistible force against a seemingly immovable object. Fredette. All he needs. He's showing everybody 27 for Fredette. In a hard-fought game that saw 15 lead changes and seven ties, Jimmer Fredette's 43 points finally handed San Diego State their first loss of the season. Deep one over Tapley. What are you supposed to do with that? You see all the highlights, and then you sit here and see it in person, and your jaw drops. As a rule, Colorado State, Fort Collins, it's a 180 from New Mexico in terms of the crowd. In my previous 11 games, I'd never gone there when they've had over half filled. This one, I believe it was a whiteout or something they had, and it was full. When we went in there to play, they're saying, we can win the conference. We can go to the NCAA tournament. We can do things here. So it was a great atmosphere. In the middle of the second half, San Diego State went on a 17-5 run to take a six-point lead. But Colorado State would rally back to tie the game with just 10 seconds to play. Be impatient. Franklin. There it is. Going right in. Franklin. Colorado State ties it. They have timeouts. Will they play? They will. DJ I didn't know if Coach Fish was going to call a timeout or not, so I just tried to get the ball down the court as fast as I could before the defense can get set. Uh, saw a double team coming, uh, fake right, went left. Step back, uh, shot, and then it was good. Got it, DJ Gay! And as soon as he took the shot, I knew, you know, it was good because, you know, I knew he, he was calm and collected and, you know, took a great shot. I'm glad that he hit the shot too, so, you know, I had to run over there and tell him first that, you know, and I'm glad that he took the shot and I'm proud of him. But does it surprise you that the guy who takes the last shot is DJ Gay? No. DJ is our captain. We didn't take a timeout. You know, that's a feel also. Sometimes we would. And DJ had the ball and he was going to make a decision and make a play. He didn't have a great shooting night, but when DJ has the ball, you, you know something good is going to happen with it. And I knew at the time that we weren't going to call a timeout. My own mind was clicking, if this happens, this is... But he made a great pullback, step back, buzzer shot that, uh, again, was part of the magical run that we had this season.
I coached in the Big Ten, and we had a couple of times during my tenure there, and we were part of a national championship team, part of a celebrated class. Uh, we didn't have there what we had here this year. When I got a call saying, it's 7.30 in the morning, and you would not believe what, what I'm witnessing, this, the line of students wrapped around all the way from the ticket window behind the arc. I said, no way. And we made a point to make sure that we weren't above the fray. We got out and, and were there to let them know how much we appreciated and needed and supported what they were doing and wanted them to feel a part of what we were doing. And they did. the nice thing was they did. There was a relationship that was cultivated which further endeared our team to our fans. And without a shadow of a doubt, we had a home court record that was directly related to the phenomenal support that we got from everyone, starting with and led by our students. Prior to the 2010-11 season, San Diego State had had eight sellouts in the history of Viejas Arena. By early February, the Aztecs had played in front of 10 capacity crowds in a row. The all-time single season attendance record shattered in just 12 games. San Diego State basketball was on the map. Known as much for their play on the court as the home court advantage created primarily by the student body known simply as the show. Gecko man, that means poster heads that uh, some of whom are faculty members here that, uh, that, that nobody knows but us as to who they are. It means guys painting their face and, and making sure they get the same seat for every game because of whether it's superstition, because they want to be on TV, because they, whatever it is, it was absolutely fantastic. Jumping up and down, cheering us on, running up and down the stairs. They're just fun um, shows. Like, you just gotta watch them and come to the game and see it for yourself. They're the best in the country. Each game, they were there. Even on the road, they were heard. We were playing, you know, off their energy when we were back at home. Uh, we didn't want to let them down. You know, and all year long, we called them our sixth man. Look over there and, and you see somebody giving you a fist from saying, come on, DJ, you got it that extra adrenaline, uh, you know, run kicks in, and uh, you're able to push through. They're our six men. They travel everywhere we go, you know. That's our heart and soul. We play for them. Ticket lines and campouts, usually the domain of blue blood programs of the ACC or the SEC, became commonplace on Montezuma Mesa. Wow, you know, growing up, that's what you hear about at Duke in North Carolina, schools like that. Uh, but for us to have a part of that and to see what's been going on, around campus in this community uh, to see that was definitely something special. I don't hear anything but noise. But when I came home after one game and Angie said, could you believe, you know, what the students and how they, I said, they were good, weren't they? She said, no, can you believe when they started jumping up and down, we believe that we will win chant? out one game when they opened the door and saw the students flying in and sprinting down the steps to get those seats and I smiled as I saw it and I told our players that in the locker room before that game I said when you go out look around and see what you have created and smile because it's it doesn't happen everywhere and I've been around long enough to know that it doesn't and it's happened here this year's team, some way, somehow, worked on the hearts of our students and then this community to where they wanted to be here with them. On February 26th, the community wanted to be with the Aztecs for payback on Jimmer Fredette and the Cougars. The show 
was joined by happy campers from all over the city and the national media. I got here about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Three in the morning. 8.30 last night. It's, un it's unheard of around here. It's exciting. You gotta get here way, way earlier because people are already wrapping around the arc. Sleeping in tents and sleeping bags. And someone even has a couch. Not even the indomitable spirit of the show could carry San Diego State to victory over BYU in the second meeting. No matter how much Aztec Nation believed, exactly one month after the first loss, with emotions high, redemption against their arch rival would have to wait. The only blemish, the only team that said gotcha was BYU. They had the National Player of the Year who uh, torched everybody and played us like a couple times like we weren't even out there. What would ultimately be the season's final home game for the five starters ended up as a coronation for DJ Gay, Chase Taplin, Billy White, Malcolm Thomas, and Kawhi Leonard and their teammates. There was no place like home. And no group of fans better to share a Mountain West Conference co-championship. The Aztecs enter the Mountain West Tournament as defending champions with a school record 29 wins, their third straight season of 25 or more victories. They knew a third meeting with BYU was possible, but first they had to handle Utah. Sometimes you don't say anything to anybody about where you want to be, who you want to play, who you don't want to play. And in this one, I wasn't sure that I wanted to play anybody. I knew we were going to play A or B, and it was Utah. And we had beaten them twice. Beat them pretty good at our building. And we came out and uh, jumped on them from the start. That's the key to our wins, is, is on the defensive end. Utah has the ability to go on runs, and, uh, and we knew that. We watched a lot of film, and uh, we felt that uh, if we can contain them on the defensive end, everything else will take care of itself. Utah had 11 turnovers at half and 15 points. Our defense dictated everything that happened didn't give them a chance to believe that, hey, maybe we can win the tournament and go to the NCAA tournament. We did not allow them to get that feeling, and it helped further stamp the fact that we are going to win this tournament. We beat Vegas three times this year, and all three of them were identical in terms of the way it was played. Tough defense both ways. Every shot contested. No easy baskets. You have to have a will and a determination. Know you're going to get hit, not complain, and compete. And that's what we did. That game was tough. Vegas calling a point guard's worst nightmare. They'll press you the whole game. Don't give you no room to breathe, uh, very physical. There's a lot riding on that game, playing for a, a, you know, a better seed in the tournament. A six-point lead had dwindled to a tie when Chase Tapley made a big play. It was a play they ran before that, uh, that got us with uh, Chase Tapley coming off that back screen. Uh, and then I was just like, I'm going to read his eyes. And they did the same play. And hey, I was glad I'm long enough and, and lengthy. And I got, the, I got the steal and got a tip. Decided I'm going to use this whole clock. They tried to go back, and San Diego State comes out of the ball. They ran the lob 
play that they ran successfully before, but that time didn't work. What happened next was vintage DJ Gay. DJ Gay beat Colorado State a month ago in this moment. And Gay got left. DJ Gay again. Coach Fisher let it be known that no matter what happened, he wasn't calling a timeout. And uh, he said, DJ, get the ball, call for a ball screen and make a play. And uh, that's exactly what I did. Uh, once again, fake right, uh, went left, uh, shot a floater, and went in. DJ Gay has a knack of not only taking, but making big, important shots. He can go stretches where he doesn't make a shot, but you know that he's going to be unafraid to take that last shot and wants to take that last shot, which is why he made so many of them in his career fall. When you have a, a winner's mentality that he does, you never ever have doubt that you're going to get the job done and be successful. We wanted to play BYU. Players and coaches wanted to play BYU in that championship game. I didn't want them to lose in the semifinals. We wanted to have another opportunity to play them. BYU is the only team to have beaten San Diego State this year. They did it twice. The Aztecs are proud, and they have a couple of key guys that want to change that. This is where San Diego State tries to make their living, right here at the defensive end. And it's Billy White creating the steal. And then gets the beautiful long return from Malcolm Thomas. Burnett leaning in, trying to force contact. White back, dishing off. Tip in, right. 8-0 run, San Diego State. I wanted to just step it up a little bit, um, just in rebounding particularly. You know, some of the close games that we almost lost or, you know, that we did lost with BYU that, you know, I took notice that they killed us on the boards. And, you know, I, I took pride in that at the end of the year, you know, just talking to Coach Fisher and my teammates, and I just told him that, you know, I'm just going to try to step it up for us, and, you know, that's what I did. There's Billy White trying to stab. Billy White picked from that pocket. But Leonard flies in for the tip. You know, and Coach Fisher at halftime always get a report from the locker room from Mike May. He said that Coach Fisher said, run smart. So only run when it's the right time. Don't force things in transition. Look at that. Great. Left hand all the way. Chase Tapper. That game, my focus was to be a facilitator. You know, you can't get caught up in stats and, and stuff like that. You have to be able to read the game as a point guard. We had guys that, you know, were, were extremely hot that game. And um, as a point guard, when you sense that, you got to get them the ball. Great save by Gay. Jackson Emery almost stole that, and Leonard hits a three. San Diego State, nice patience. And finally, Thomas, and one. Our mentality was different. We were more comfortable, relaxed, and not so much anxious. We didn't overthink, you know, the game plan. Uh, we went out there a lot hungrier than they did. We wanted that game so bad. You know, no team's going to beat us three times in a row. Right from the start, we knew if, if we punched them first and, and kept them down, we'd have a great shot at winning that game. We're going to do a better job on Fredette. We're not going to let the other guys, who are very good players, get wide open look, and we'll go find a way to beat them. 2,000 San Diego State fans here sound like 20,000. And San Diego State's just having a good time right now. They, they are BYU led only once early in the contest. San Diego State's defense hounded for death throughout the game and was led in scoring and rebounding by senior Billy White, a Las Vegas native who had asked to guard the BYU star. My mindset was, you know, do whatever it takes for us to keep playing the whole month of March. Billy wanted to guard for death. But we switched a lot of stuff, and uh, we didn't trap as much, and so Billy had him a little bit more one-on-one -on -one as we switched, and he had him some coming down the floor. I think he was so determined that I'm going to challenge every shot, and he was so locked in to the game plan that it carried over. He just went from defense to offense like he had that same focus and determination. You know, I took it a little bit more personal. 
He's a you know, incredible scorer, you know, almost impossible to stop. I just felt, you know, I just had to take a little bit more pride in defense. You know, I told DJ and, you know, some of my teammates before the game, you know, that I don't care if I score a point or get a rebound. I just want to defend, play defense, you know, or try to make him take, you know, contested shots and hard shots. Really, the catalyst for our stretch run, tournament run, was Billy White. He was absolutely sensational. So for Billy, a Las Vegas native, going back home was extra special. And during that stretch, people remember the shot DJ made, but I remember the way Billy played with such focus, determination, and success. You said, he's not going to allow us to lose. have returned home victorious. But amid the smiles and the handshakes, there remained one fact. San Diego State had never won an NCAA tournament game. I was concerned. I don't think I voiced that concern with the team. I don't think they felt that I was concerned. But when you're the favorite, we'd never been favored in our previous trips to the NCAA tournament. When you're supposed to win, the season with 32 wins will, won't be successful if you don't win. And that's hammered and hammered and hammered. I think they, I think they, they thought about it a little bit. Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm, I'm human, so you definitely think about it. The pressure is definitely there. We kind of were nervous last year, and we didn't really play how we could play, but this year is going to be different. Maybe we're a little bit too tight. And the longer a team that's not supposed to win stays with you, the more belief they have that they can win and the more guarded you sometimes can become. I told our team, I tried, I said, somebody's gonna get their first ever NCAA tournament win. First time they've been. And we're gonna be that team that gets the win. Billy White is a senior out of Las Vegas. Wow, long free here by Billy White. Yeah, they're, they're just relentless. They just keep going and going, Reg, and eventually it starts going their way. Leonard, Chapley for three. I do believe the fact we played them and lost to them here earlier, and some of those kids were on the team, and then played them at their place and won a really close game, there was respect that we had. So don't think that in the first four minutes you're going to be 20 points ahead. So we tried to preach that. This is going to be a gradual process. And when it was real close, we came, we came back to that theme. Don't look at the scoreboard. Play the next possession. Make a stop. And you'll be able to look up at the end and smile. They go down to the other end of White. Snaps it outside. Ray on an open three. He has been the difference in the second half. An 11 nothing run by San Diego State. And Ray Hunt has been to the tip of the spear. It was hard fought. It was not a game that, uh, that you could breathe a sigh of relief until the end. But it was our first ever NCAA tournament postseason win. And it felt good for all of us. The main thing that was on my mind is that we lost last year to Tennessee. I just knew how that felt from losing and having experience playing my freshman year. So going to my sophomore year in the tournament, just didn't want to lose that first game. And his team will begin to celebrate. There's a huge crowd here from San Diego. And for the first time in the history of this program, San Diego State is going to win an NCAA tournament game. It's big. It's uh, something that uh, I've dreamed about since I stepped foot on this campus. 
It feels great. Uh, it's a great team, came a long way, uh, but we're still not satisfied. Man, this is amazing, it's an amazing feeling, especially to be here with my brothers for all year through thick and thin. We got the made history and we got the first win ever in the NCAA tournament. You should embrace this moment and say, we got the first one in the history of San Diego State. The first NCAA tournament in the history of San Diego State. So the most important thing that you can do is embrace one another. So give me my five seniors up front. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Billy's going to decide who's going to put the 33 on there. Let's go, Bill. Big 33. All right, gang. Congratulations on a great team victory. 15,713 days. That's how long it took between San Diego State's last tournament win as a Division II school and the win over Northern Colorado. That same year, 1968, a young man named Steve Fisher began his career in the coaching profession. With the first win behind them and Temple ahead, the team looked to win what their coach called the Tucson Invitational. I knew that we had a team good enough to not only make the tournament, but win in the tournament, and maybe win and continue to win and continue to win. But I also know that in a one and done, you have to have a bit of good fortune. You gotta get a little lucky. Welcome to this second game. The Aztecs have never had a second game in the NCAAs. They had been 0 for 6. That particular monkey, no gorilla, is off their back. As a team, we'll be very disappointed if we don't come out with the win. It has been a special season so far. Uh, we're not ready for it to end yet. It's important to embrace the moment and the opportunity that we've been given and um, try and do whatever it takes to come out with the win. Here's DJ. Three assists, not one single turnover in an NCAA game. Here's Kawhi, pull up jump shot. Great look, in and out, no good. Rebound, knock him, goes up and scores. That's what they got to do on the offensive board. Jefferson the rebound. Rejected inside by Thomas, and here comes Leonard the other way. Look at him handle the ball. <laughs> and he's 6'6", and inside with the flush. Billy White. Here's Malcolm Thomas. Harwell was running the doorstep, and Thomas cleans it up again. Oh! And so we are in the second half. Winner will go to the Sweet 16. There's a long three nailed by Ramon Moore. And look at Temple, down moments ago by 11. Going down to the last minute, that's what it's going to do. These two teams both play some ferocious man-to-man -man defense. Man, they do. Here's Temple with a crossover, drive, can't penetrate. Shot clock at 7, 6, Kawhi. Pull-up jump shot, a 10-footer, good! Kawhi Leonard, 54-49, the Aztecs. Got to stop here, you're looking large. Two minutes left to play. More. And that is a three and a big shot put down by Khalif Wyatt. He's got 11. The Owls trying to tie outside with a drive and on top of the circle, LaVoy Allen. He'll try to penetrate a running 10 footer good by LaVoy Allen to tie the game. This is deliciously agonizing. 61 58 Temple. 2.05 left to play. Malcolm posting up on the boy Allen, a little six foot jumper, yes! And he was fouled. Two minutes exactly left to play. 61 60, Malcolm can tie it. Wanting to play at least another game as an Aztec. This transfer from Pepperdine shoots, got it. Big tie. DJ Game. Malcolm Thomas. Thomas, we're going to our second overtime. Oh, 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 this is beautiful. They don't seem to care who who gets the credit. They just want to win the game, and I think that's a credit to Coach Fisher and how his uh, approach is. Two ten on the game clock, leading 65-63 over Temple. DJ, give and go, couldn't get it back to him from Billy White. Billy, a fall away, seven foot jump shot, good. Who this can be by the senior. Juan Fernandez, here comes Moore. 
Jefferson and Allen rejected by Thomas. What a big time defensive play. Four block shots. He is a one man wrecking crew inside. You know, we made a couple stops at the end and a couple baskets that, you know, that we need to make and, you know, uh, huge free throws by Malcolm and Kawhi to, you know, to make us come home with a, uh, with a win and make us put us in the Sweet 16. Here the drive, stolen! Stolen by Kawhi! He's going all the way! Slam dunk! The Aztecs are going to the Sweet 16! The Aztecs are going to the Sweet 16! These are games that are, that are hard. They're hard for both sides. We ran off the floor smi all smiles, and they ran off the floor with tears in their eyes, and, and that's the nature of what we do. I don't care who you are. That game, a game like that could go either way, and it went our way. And we felt tremendous satisfaction to say we're moving on. And we talked about this is the Tucson Invitation. We weren't talking about we want to win six games. We want to win the Tucson Invitation. So then we said, mission accomplished. We're moving on, which came out easily and sounded awfully good to say San Diego State, Sweet 16. With a berth in the Sweet 16 secured, the team prepared to play up the road in Anaheim. For some, like senior Brian Carwell, the anticipation of a matchup with UConn was a tremendous opportunity. Once you get to, to rounds like this, seeds don't matter. The level of talent is all the same unless they wouldn't be here. Now it's about preparation and execution, and, um, and I feel like that's where it has to be for us, just uh, making sure that we're prepared and that we execute. UConn, who obviously went on to win the national championship, led by a superstar in Kimball Walker, their guard, they had size and strength on the front line. They blocked as many as 10 or 12 shots in one game in the NCAA tournament, uh, so they were long, athletic, used to winning. They ran through the Big East tournament, did what nobody had ever done, won five straight games. They were on a streak of seven straight wins. And once again, we knew that we were going to have a game that would be back and forth. Both teams played good defense. It was one that uh, you have to make sure that uh, when you have opportunities, you take advantage of those opportunities. And that was a big part of that game. We had chances to win the game, but we're six for 13 from the free throw line, which you can't do. Teams advance for reasons, and teams don't, and they're a handful of subtle things that enter into that, a handful of things that anybody can look at a stat sheet and see. It hurts. It should hurt. For our team this year, for what they've accomplished, it hurts exponentially more. Could not be more proud of how we competed, how hard we played, and unfortunately, we came up a bit short. The last thing I will say that I said to our team is, Give one another a hard hug and tell them how much you love them and uh, don't be ashamed to cry. Don't be, don't be ashamed to shed a tear. Uh, you've done so much for San Diego State, the community, and for yourselves that when we reflect back on it, all of us will know that. It hurts. Uh, we all became a family. We had a lot of success this year, a lot of accomplishments, but at the end of the day, we wanted it all. We have to thank our fans we have to give them all the credit for the type of season that we had all year. And without them, I don't think we would have made it this far. So um, we're just thankful for everybody who supported San Diego State this year. When Angie and I came here in 1999, we, with all our hearts, believe that this would be a great fit for us. And it's been exponentially greater. I knew that we were going to have a program that would take time to build, but we could do that. It's been the uh, most exciting basketball of my whole life. Just um, these last two years being the building block to help me get to where I, um, I've been dreaming since I was little. So these two years just mean a lot to me. The disappointment for me is all behind me. When you know you've got a team that could beat anybody, when it ends, you look around and say, what am I gonna do? What next? Why? How come we're not practicing? It, it's that much more difficult to deal with. It wouldn't matter whether we had lost by one at the buzzer or by 20. We were good enough to continue to be playing. And I knew that 
Our players knew that, our fans knew that, and we all felt it. Me and DJ first stepped on this campus, we knew we were going to do something special. And I'm just, you know, glad that the whole world, you know, the people just around us saw our talent, you know, that, you know, we were not under the radar anymore, that, you know, that San Diego State can compete with the best. Got a lot of great coaches on our staff who helped these players, the fans, and everybody involved should have a little snippet of not only the net, but all these trophies and awards that I was able to get and get recognized on this year. Take a program with my fellow teammates and, and change it the way that we did uh, is a huge accomplishment. You know, we're definitely proud of, of, of where we're at and, and how we got here. A lot of people didn't think it was possible, um, but we did it. You know, we set great records. It's, it, it was just a fun year to be a part of. I smile every day when I think about this team. And I smile first because of the young guys we had on the team. Uh, but I also smile knowing that I've been doing this since 1968. Never ever have I had a team win 34 games. Uh, it's a special accomplishment. Uh, and the way our ball club did it and the surge of interest and enthusiasm that continued to grow and grow and grow made me feel so proud to know that I was part of something really, really unique that will be in, etched in everybody's mind forever. We game time ready. Welcome to my gym where the crowd stays heavy. Keep the bus running cause this won't take long. Four minutes left, hear the show still going strong. We game time ready. Opponents can't sleep when they leave. No Freddy, it's the Aztecs in the house tonight. Hoop squad on deck, who's next to fight? More than a big game, hype about it. It's like a rival game when the gym is crowded. It's like the fans are routed. Ready and shouting, they wanna see us win, and there's no doubt about it. How you wanna lose it all begins with me. Trailing on the break, I shoot the three, there's nothing you can do with me. And ruthlessly, the crowd is telling me to get used to these L's you be taking every time you step into the V. We game time ready. Game time ready. Aztec, we game time ready. Finally.